Welcome to Christianity A to Z. This is our uh, weekly podcast. We're working through the alphabet, looking at different doctrines, and we are on the letter Q. And uh, as you might have guessed, this is this was one of the harder letters, wasn't it, brothers? <laughs> it was. I think we had questions, we had Q and A. Um, yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, so we, we've settled on a word in well, it's a word that's in, in the Old Testament quite a lot, but um, in, in the New Testament here in One Thessalonians five, quench. Uh, 1 Thessalonians 5 verse uh, 19 about quenching the spirit so we're going to talk about that specifically but also probably broaden it out to think about the the work of the Holy Spirit so that's where we're going today my name is Tom I'm with Ben and Pete we're pastors at Cornerstone Church and as ever you can go onto our website cornerstonechurchkingston.org and our various social media channels to find lots of lots of other goodies there so we're going to start um, 1 Thessalonians 5 we're going to read from verse 12, I 12. think, I think, because it puts it in context, so it's quite a, a long read up to the actual verse, Quench the Spirit, but I think it's, it's quite helpful. So um, uh, Paul's writing, of course, to the church in Thessalonica, and he says, uh, Now we ask you, brothers and sisters, to acknowledge those who work hard among you, who care for you in the Lord, and admonish you. Hold them in the highest regard, in love, because of their work. Live in peace with each other, And we urge you, brothers and sisters, warn those who are idle and disruptive, encourage the disheartened, help the weak, be patient with everyone. Make sure that nobody pays back wrong for wrong, but always strive to do what is good for each other and for everyone else. Rejoice always, pray continually, give thanks in all circumstances, Uh, For this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. And here it is. Do not quench the spirit. Do not treat prophecy with contempt, but test them all. Hold on to what is good. Reject every kind of evil. Hmm. So it's in the context, uh, don't, don't quench the spirit, of Christian living within the church, the body, the family of Christ, isn't it? So uh, this is... Uh, you know, it's it's right at the heart, isn't it, of those two mm. sections? You've got this long section of, uh, you know, honor those that admonish you in in the Word of God. Obviously, uh, you know, encourage the disheartened, uh, rebuke the idle, that sort of stuff. And then the other side of the quench the spirit verses, uh, don't treat prophecy um, with contempt. But um, it's in the context of church life, really, isn't it? So the Holy Spirit, one of His great works is working these truths out mm. in the life of the church. Mm. You can't have a church without the Holy Spirit. Mm. We, 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 you know, if we're not a Holy Spirit church, we're not a church yeah. because he's there working these things in our lives. And it seems very much so um, that he's working the word of God yeah. into our lives, yeah. his word, because, yeah. because the Bible is the spirit word. Yes. And so the spirit word, he's working into our lives so that we're loved, people and warn people and admonish people and encourage the disheartened and listen to the word of God mm. he's working this out and without the Holy Spirit you've just got an organization called church yeah. uh, not the body not the living uh, um, uh, triune God's family yeah mm. and, uh, <laughs> as we were reading it before we press record uh, Pete, you were reading it, and you had to pause after every line of that that you yeah. read because you just, gosh, isn't that lovely? <laughs> isn't that wonderful? Isn't the church amazing? Um, because these things are just not where we naturally gravitate towards. Uh, it's why we need to be told them. But um, living at peace with with each other, you know, warning the idle, disruptive, encouraging the desire, and help the weak. It's just not what the world would do at all, is it? Which is why we need the spirit to. Um, to, 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 to work in us and, and draw us together. Mm. Um, but it's the word ministry, as you said. So it's, 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 the minist- it's the life of the church, but it's specifically the word ministry, isn't it? As you yeah. were pointing out, because you, you were right. So it's those who admonish you. So they speak to you and they're teaching you. And we know that the, the word of the Lord is useful for mm. training, correcting, mm. rebuking, training and all righteousness. Um, you know, and those who, who are warning and helping um, and those who are praying continually, uh, it's it's the word ministry within the church um, where the spirit. It's, it's is interesting going. because right. I, you know, uh, oh, that they're always coming round. They come in cycles. Uh, once you've been a Christian long enough, you yeah. see the cycles. But um, you know, there's very often sort of some big American 
someone it's usually an American comes <laughs> over here and they have they put on holy spirit meetings at big conference halls and stuff yeah. like that. But actually it's just interesting. What that is saying is the church is the Holy Spirit meeting, isn't it? Yep. So when we meet just the ordinary yep. living out of loving, forgiving, encouraging that's the spirit, isn't it? Yeah. So we want to we want to see a Holy Spirit meeting. You come to a church that has the Word of God and is trying to love each other. Yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. And you see that that the, both of those things in Acts two, which is another verse I was thinking about, where Peter is um, preaching at Pentecost, and he says at the end of his sermon, uh, "Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift." of the Holy Spirit. And so here the Holy Spirit is linked to repentance and faith in Christ. So uh, wherever Christ and his crucifixion and his resurrection is being faithfully proclaimed, Mm. uh, that's the Holy Spirit wants to uh, illuminate and draw attention to that finished work of Jesus. And that is the center of the church's message, isn't it? In one way or another, it's what we proclaim week after week, isn't it? That Jesus died and rose and uh, we should repent and believe in him. And then afterwards, uh, just very soon after that, you get this comment on the fellowship of the believers and so they're uniting. We've talked about this in other in other podcasts. You know, they're they're feasting together, they're fellowship and they're praying. So there's the dual work of the Spirit again. He accompanies the preaching of Christ in the Word, mm. and he creates the community of Christ, which is in one Thessalonians as well, isn't it? You quench the Spirit by despising the Spirit Word, the proclamation of Jesus, and you quench the Spirit by not allowing Him to bring about the unity in Christ that He He wants to that He wants to achieve. Um, and and that's something of what it means. So, so I was looking at actually looking up the word quench this morning, and it's used quite a lot in the Old Testament uh, about the wrath of God, so that God's wrath is going to be poured out in full measure. It's like fire, and it will not be quenched. Mm. In other words, it's going to reach its max it's going to accomplish what it is designed to accomplish and perhaps there's something useful there in thinking about quenching the spirit that it's it's trying to um, abruptly stop what God is trying to accomplish mm. you know it's it's, mm. it's sort of halting the work that he's well, about shoving water yeah. on isn't it yeah shoving yeah. water on yeah and that's why the old NIV is um I've flicked off it now but it's like do not put out the spirit's fire or something yeah. you know so it's to, it's trying to yeah, yeah. So that's yeah, we we don't want firemen in the in the church, do we? No, no we, we have, have firemen sav. Uh, fire assessments and <laughs> well, I know that yeah. <laughs> everywhere. No, but that's the problem, isn't it? So are we are we leaving church steaming Christians? <laughs> yeah, um, you know, with smoke coming off us because we've just quenched the spirit because yeah. we've heard the word of God, we've heard the prophetic word of God to to our hearts, and then we start talking about football and England and how they're going to well, beat absolutely. whatever yes, it is they're the playing. Point. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> so, so there's suddenly all these steaming Christians. We don't want steaming Christians. We want Christians on Blazing. fire. <laughs> blaze, spirit, blaze. Yeah. There we go. It's funny how yeah. um, fire is sort of in the Old Testament, it's very judgment um, sort of uh, focused. And then here, I mean, the spirit, I mean, the spirit has come to convict the world of their sin, I suppose. Mm. So there's a kind of judgment, um, but in order to lead you to the cross. Um, and I suppose that's. That's probably what you know. That's what the that's and that's the purpose that the spirit has come to do, mm. and that's why we don't. Want to but stop that's it. a cleansing effect, isn't it? Because fire just burns, doesn't it? Mm. So it will burn the impurities out. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Yep. Yeah. So, so in one sense, that's exactly right, isn't yeah. it? It's, we're 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 wanting to sit under the word of God, not to have a nice little word that yes. comforts us only, and we just carry on with our life, but mm. to burn us yeah I, I i remember i, I remember an apprentice i'm just getting all excited now um i remember sitting under an apprentice this was some time ago in and he was talking he his whole phrase was um he was well he was leading the service and he said um okay well lovely to have you here stretch out relax sit back in your chair and uh afterwards i said why are you saying that yeah hmm. you what don't relax. Okay. You know, put on a hard helmet. Mm. You know, you should put on fireproof <laughs> clothing. God is going to come. The spirit <laughs> is going to speak to us. Yeah. You know, yeah. sit up, listen. Yeah. You know, yeah. <laughs> um, it should be that sort of attitude. Yeah, it was that me, wasn't it? <laughs> no, no, that wasn't. It wasn't <laughs> yeah. you. No, no. Kick off no, no, it definitely wasn't you. But um, let's let's. Um, you said I can't imagine a... you saying that. No, actually, uh, you said something just a minute ago. Um, which, which was quite good, and I, I think it would be a good way to begin applying this already, really. So, so 
when you said after a sermon, which is a Holy Spirit word, you know, yeah. listen to as the Holy Spirit people, we, we might immediately change the subject after yeah. God has spoken and talk about football or what's for lunch. Um, and and that's, that's one way of quenching the Spirit, isn't it, as you say, because we're not, we're not allowing you know, the, spirit, the Spirit to <coughs> convict. We're not trying to encourage each other to apply the Word of God. It's just like something, it's like a slot that we filled before we move on, what what other ways do you think, or have you noticed, perhaps either personally or uh, in the life of the church, that we can we can begin? Because no one wants to be guilty of this, do, mm. do they? But what are some of the maybe the, the the habits that we have, or just in our culture, maybe that um, can can stop can lead mm. us to do this? Do you think? Um, I mean, you said that one. Well, I mean, one. you're not going to be on fire with the spirit if you're not where the spirit is, where uh, and he's there at the center of church. Mm. So it's very hard. Now, of course, there are reasons why people can't come to a gathering, but yeah. you know, and we, we, but that's up to us to try to think about how we can go to those people if they're ill and stuff like that. Mm. But if you just deliberately don't come to the place where the spirit is speaking, mm. well, you can't even quench him no. <laughs> in one sense, can you? Yeah, yeah. Because yeah, there's nothing to quench. No, <laughs> yeah. Mm. Um, so I think that's a really important thing. The gathered people is where God is, where his spirit is. Um, and it's around the word of God, which rebukes and encourages and monishes, as, as, as Ben you know, told us from, from Timothy. Um, and so if we're deliberately not opening the word of God, listening to the word of God, despising the preacher because I don't like what he wears, or he, he <laughs> said something that was a little bit you know, offensive to me and I'm upset about that. You know, th- that's all hundreds of ways mm-hmm. of quenching the mm-hmm. spirit, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Not listening. It's interesting. Another way to quench the spirit is by, by being too open-eared and listening to absolutely anything and everything and accepting it. Because it says in verse 20, do not treat prophecies with contempt, but test them all. Hold on to what is good and mm. reject every mm. kind of evil. I think that um, we can listen to a great sermon and go, wow, that was really challenging. And then we can go and listen to some friends who give us some bad advice and go, wow, that was really helpful advice. Or mm. hop onto YouTube and watch just a random bloke stand up and give a, a talk on TED Talks or a sermon and, and just be blown away by it and kind of be just uh, in the wind, in a sense, blown around by different... Mm. Um, so, so, you know, not just is your ear open and listening, but what are you listening to? Yeah. Um, discernment is really important. Isn't it? Yeah. And, yeah. I, and that way you quench the work the spirit is doing in you mm. because you're undoing it in a sense by taking as authority things that are not authoritative. Mm. Mm. Yeah. And I, th- I think, you know, it, it's, it, it's, um, it's it's remembering and knowing what is going on when we're gathering, isn't it? That that we're not just coming, you know, to church for something to do. That we're, when we're gathered and we're singing and we're praying and the word of God is being preached, you know, God is addressing us, you know. And I think that is one of the things that we've talked before about when we come to sermons. It's trying to recapture that language, so so we're helping each other to know, you know, this is not just a you know, Pete's going to come and explain that message or explain that word or something or that um, we're going to have our Bible reading now or something. I know we might use those terms, but it's trying to set the expectation that, um, you know, through the fallible preacher, nonetheless, this is the infallible word of God and God is going to speak to us. And, Mm. um, you know, that is not, that's not a light, that's not a chipper, trivial thing, is it? You know, that is a serious Mm. moment. It's a, a joyfully serious moment and, but, and, and, and um, we did a little series on that didn't we We did yeah and you can hear that yeah, yeah yeah um yeah really good book actually i, I actually can't remember oh it's the thing is called listen up by christopher ash which is all about how to hear a sermon and we we built a sermon series around it in the evenings which was yeah you can find on, find on the website we've I hope, got a I podcast think. as well four part podcast the oh, we did yeah yeah um yeah. think the thing about the, the thing about the the spirit is that people seem to take it, take him away from, and and and, and because it's sort of to make him into some kind of mysterious sort of zapping power, and mm. you don't get that, do you? Um, you it, it it seems to be so very um, uh, down to earth, hearing a word, working it through in your life. That's the power that he. He gives us, but mm. you know, there's sort of zappingness and all of that, and strange, mysterious things, isn't there? That mm. seem to be 
that Christians seem to be taken up that mm. seem to be just not there in the Bible. Mm. Mm. I guess it's the gifts, isn't it? The gifts of the Spirit. And some of them are a little more flashy than others. It's like yeah. the gift of healing. Mm. Um, but, you know, we can talk about that. Well, but, where's yeah. that gift uh, <laughs> d- during this p- pandemic? During COVID. All, all, the pe- all the people that were going on about saying they had the, the gift of healing, fine, great. We, it's a great thing to have, I'm sure. Mm. But where are all those people that trundled, have trundled into London and had massive conferences and purport to heal people? Mm. Where are they now? Yeah. Where have they been in this COVID? Anyway, sorry, that was a slight aside. But yeah. it's making a good point that, that that I think is one of the ways that we can quench the spirit when we can when we can obsess about the gifts the spirit has given me and yeah. you know, I'm focusing too much on myself in that. You know, what is my gift? How can I express my gift? This is my gift, you know. I need to yeah. rather than rather than actually saying, Well, no, the Holy Spirit gifts gifts to a body yeah. of believers for the common good. Yeah. And uh, he might give you a gift in one place, which if you were to join another church, he would give you a different one because that's what's needed in that right. body. So they're not these like fixed entities, are yeah. they? That um, they're spirit, for the edification uh, of the church. Yeah, and yeah. maybe not forever, yeah. you know, just for a time to serve yeah. a need. And, you know, um, that's really important, isn't it? So we quench him by, by just thinking, like, I'm going to travel around until I find somewhere where my yes. gift is going to be appreciated yeah. rather yeah. than saying, well, you know, you know, Holy Spirit, gift me for this time, for that's these right. body of believers, yeah. you know, and that's for the common... Yeah. For the common I, th- I think that's really uh, helpful because you, you often have people that come from another church... Uh, let's say you've got sort of 18, you know, grade eight piano concert players of, yeah. uh, in the church. Yeah. And then this bloke turns up and he says, I must play the piano mm. because that's my gift. And you think, well, we don't actually need that. No, We've got and 18 I just of got them. soaking wet. It doesn't even work anymore. <laughs> yeah, but um, <laughs> but can you? Uh, you know, what, what else can you do? Uh, could you put chairs out? Oh no, I can't do that because I've yeah. got piano fingers. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's it's basically the gift of the spirit to the church. It's not for you to to show it off, but as you say, mm. to edify the church. What can you do to edify the church? Mm. And and the spirit is the one that gives us this in mm. order to grow us as a body. Mm. Mm. Yeah, we see it as. Um I've heard people talk about it, as we've described, as the Spirit giving us a package, like a gift for us. This is my spiritual gift from God to me, mm. rather than packing us up and giving us to the church. Yes, mm. Which brilliant. is the way around that it is. Yeah, that is brilliant. So it's not, my, you know, what's your spiritual gift? It's, you know, how are you the gift of the church? Brilliant. Is the question, yeah. isn't it? Um, Although there are lots of people walking around saying, I'm God's I'm gift God's to the gift. church. <laughs> yeah. God's gift to Jesus. John 17. Yeah, no, that's yeah. really good. Yeah. Great. So, okay. So those are some of the ways we can quench the spirit. I mean, you know, we we did. I know Q is the word is the word is the letter. Um, <laughs> but did we want to talk any any more broadly? Because because we have spoken, you know, about um, the work of the Father and the Son lots in previous podcasts. But did we want to sort of broaden it out a bit and talk about that the work of the Holy Spirit? I mean, we've covered quite a few things. Well, I, I think I, I there's suppose, a lots but, of confusion about um, the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Um. But but. It seems uh, when you work through the scriptures that that he he the, the scripture is the Holy Spirit word. Yeah. So that's the word I should be in if I want to be a Holy Spirit person. Mm. I need to be in the Holy Spirit word um, because it's God breathed word, as it says in two Timothy three sixteen. This is the breath of God, and it's the same word breath and spirit that are used. So, um, so. Uh, this is the spirit word. If I want to hear the spirit speaking to me, it's in the word I want. So don't despise that. Don't mm. quench that. Mm. Get into the word. And as you as you rightly said, don't have ears for lots of other weird things. Mm. Um, but, you know, we can't be Christians without the Holy Spirit mm. because we need to be born again. Mm. And we're born again by the spirit. So you can't be a Christian unless the Holy Spirit is in your life. And sometimes I think maybe we quench the Spirit um, by sort of trying to force people into a Christian morality or a, a, a Christian ethic or, you know, what, what, or world, even worldview mm. without, without saying they'll never get yeah, that. Yeah. They need to be born again into the kingdom yeah. of God. I remember one of the books you recommended uh, ages ago was this biography of Christmas Evans. Mm. And uh, he was a Welsh preacher was it 1800s or yeah something yeah and um 
you know, great name, <laughs> um, Christmas Evans, but he he fell into this this heresy of the time called Sandemanianism, which which is exactly what you were talking about, where people were basically saying all all you need to do to become a Christian is to is to to agree to certain propositions, you know, to intellectual, you know, could you, do you believe that Christ was a person in history and did these things? And it was just intellectual assent to mm. things. And that was all that it was. And he, I, I think because it sounded intellectual and that was what the academics were believing of the day. And and, and I think, I don't know, these details may be sketchy, but I think he was quite an uge- uneducated guy and, and felt all like, um, you know, in, uh, inferior to these and and wanted and so oh yeah well they're the academics they must know and so sort of fell into that mm. but then god uh you know rescued him and, and he fell back in no that you must be born again that's what it is to be a christian you know um intellectual or not rich or poor you need the gift of the spirit you know we're born again through the living and enduring word of god and that's the spirit's work and um so yeah, sometimes we can, maybe we can fall into that, you know. As long as we give them the ingredients, they'll they'll come round, you know. But actually, they need the spiritual life and rebirth, don't they? Mm-hmm. Um, so that's we need to keep that keep that in our. And I guess we would quench the spirit by not preaching that. I, you know, I think I so. Yeah. yeah, I think I think so. Yeah. Yeah. Other things. Um, what else is the spirit is doing? Um, well, yeah. So he's he's. Um, he he's helping us do these things as we've said so there's the ministry of the word but then there's also living at peace with each other mm. forgiving each other bearing with one another those are all spiritual supernatural things that he enables us to do um and perhaps it's something we need to pray for help for if we do have a grievance with someone in in the church uh we need to pray holy spirit help me mm. because mm. i by myself hate this person that's my heart i'm a murderer by my heart Mm. um but actually i need to love these people i have actually prayed that once for a particular person i was at at university with Mm. i was living with this this girl um and i just i just yeah 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 yeah, yeah. (laughs) don't name her (laughs) yeah no or a guy yeah yeah. yeah. (laughs) one one of the two (laughs) could have been high school (laughs) or college (laughs) um no so i just i I remember meeting her and going oh i don't think we're going to get on but then just just sort of being prompted to 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 pray actually you know father you put me in this house with these people um Mm. this isn't an accident um and I just, yeah, would you cause me to have affection for her and mm. to 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 pray for her and invite her to stuff and mm. um, yeah, and that was that was something that over the the, the couple of years that we lived um, at university was something that, yeah was something that mm. that happened and I and now that girl was my wife no, 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 no. <laughs> we grew in friendship and, <laughs> and that, but that is a Holy Spirit work isn't yeah. it right? yeah. because the, the, because and we're powerful. in an age of of cancelling aren't we yeah. we're, we're actually the easiest thing is just to say, right, I'm going to unfriend you, cut you out of my life. Mm. Um, or, you know, if somebody slightly upsets me in the church, I'll just move. I'll just yeah. move because there's one down the road and I can get in my car and go there and they'll have me and, you know. Uh, but there's no, you don't really need the Holy Spirit to do that, yeah. to cancel someone. No. You know, it's quite, it's quite, you can do that by the flesh, well, that, can't that, you? That's it, why that um, lovely expression in, in Galatians is the fruit of the Spirit, isn't mm. it? It's a sort of beautiful thing because fruit is always yeah. sort of nice, isn't it? And f- fresh and alive and yeah. juicy. And, um, you know, so you've got, you know, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, faithfulness, gentleness, uh, self-control and, and what, what, whatever I've missed there. Um, but it, it's, it is a beautiful growing thing. And that's what was happening with you, isn't it? That you're yeah. beginning to, you know, and, and, and that will help that person. Mm-hmm. That will help her, won't it? Yeah. Because if you're negative to her and bitter towards her and, you know, clumsy with her and and so forth, it's it's not gonna help her. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I mean I think I think the other thing is that I mean that's you know, um is that you know, we we forget that the Holy Spirit is is a is a he, is a person. Um and I think that that's half the m- problem. A member of the I think that's Trinity, half the problem. You know, I think that's yeah. half the problem. Jesus called him him. Yeah. But because there's this title, the Holy Spirit, it yeah. sounds yeah. like a yeah or ghost a, is the old is it Holy Ghost? Yeah. yeah. A Holy yeah. Ghost meeting. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, ghost power. It's, uh, yeah. yeah. Um, and and there's this sense of power from him. Hmm. Then we get this idea of this 
basically electricity that you plug into that gives you power to do mm. supernatural things. Mm. But the supernatural things are loving this girl, mm -hmm. uh, having joy in in pain and difficulty. Mm. Yep. They're the real supernatural things, aren't they? Not mm -hmm. just this... Because, you know, there was a time where you had these meetings where people would fall over and mm. woof like a dog and, mm. you know, roar like a lion. And and that was supposed to be the demonstration of the Holy Spirit. Um, but we're seeing that it's actually... Extraordinary, isn't it? It's nonsense. It was, ah, I went okay. to those meetings. Um, and sorry, just the other thing is that the Spirit spotlights... Uh, so he writes the word, so that's the Holy Spirit word, the scriptures, but he spotlights Jesus. Mm. So he's been called, I know you can argue with this, but there's something good about it. He's been called the shy member of the Trinity. Mm. And, and what that means is that he's the one that that is, he doesn't go on about himself. Mm. He, he, he doesn't say, I am, I, I, I am mm. seven times, uh, he, uh, like Christ. Uh, but he he spotlights Christ. Mm. He he, you know, when you've got a spotlight, the spotlight is aiming at someone mm. on the stage. It's not. Oh, look at the spotlight. Mm. Um, Tell that story about the um, when you were at that conference and it was a Holy Spirit song. Do you remember that? Oh one? yes, yeah, <laughs> yes. So I was speaking on the Holy Spirit, and um, it was a youth conference thing, and. Uh, that they had this song uh, called uh, they called a Holy Spirit song, and um, they they then sang a song all about Jesus. Mm. And I said, "This is fantastic." So I stood up and said, "You've absolutely got this <laughs> right. Mm. Uh, that is a Holy Spirit song. It's all about Jesus. That's what the Holy Spirit does." Mm. And then they said, oh, no, sorry, we sang the wrong one. We're going <laughs> to sing this. And they sang this song about power and just being zapped <laughs> and speaking in weird languages or something. And I said, that's not a Holy yeah, Spirit yeah. song. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that was quite funny. Yeah. Well, the yeah. pattern in Scripture is never the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit never does anything ever uh, to bring attention to himself, does he? That's right. He's yeah. always doing things in obedience to the Father and the Son. Uh, in order for the building up of the church and to mm. glorify Christ, mm. um, so why would he do? Why would he work any differently now? Mm. He's not. He's doing the same stuff. Mm. Um, which is why when you go into an ordinary church like Cornerstone, uh, you won't go. Well, some people walk in and go, "This isn't a very Holy Spirit church," mm. but that's probably because they don't know the, the Holy Spirit, mm. because it absolutely is a Holy mm. Spirit. Because he's not drawing attention to himself here, mm. but who is being mm. proclaimed and. Christ is being proclaimed. People are bearing with one another's mm. sins and grievances. And well, I, I went to a Holy Spirit meeting yeah. in London with a big evangelist from America, and uh, it was it was a long meeting. It was it, you know after two hours I went. So mm. to be fair, yeah. it might have changed after I'd gone, right. but I don't think it was going to. In two hours, they never mentioned Jesus or any concept of savior, or right. it was only talking about power and being zapped and, mm, and yeah. woofing on the floor and yeah. and shaking like a weird sort of person yes. uh, who's drunk and that you would dr be drunk in the spirit. Yeah. I came out saying that is not a Holy Spirit meeting yeah. because there was no word of God there mm. and uh, no Bible opened and no nothing about Jesus. Yeah. How could it be a Holy Spirit meeting? Mm. I don't know what it was. Yeah. Well, I've got ideas, but yeah. mm. it wasn't a Holy Spirit meeting. Yeah. Mm. Even Jesus himself in the Gospels is filled with the Spirit, and yet you mm. hardly ever sort of see him directly because he's enabling Christ to do his, the work he's been sent to do. Um, after he's um, yeah, after he's baptized, the Spirit fills him, doesn't he? Uh, and then he can do you know he can heal people and walk on water and in the power of the Spirit he does these things. But yet it's never. Look at the Holy Spirit. Look how mm. great He is. It's mm. look at what Christ has done. Mm. And actually, Jesus says the Holy Spirit will never say anything other than what He's been told to say. Mm. So if you hear the Spirit speak, really you're hearing Jesus speak. Yes, it's the Spirit um, of Christ, isn't yeah. it? It's yeah. the Spirit of Christ. Yeah. And yeah. so He, it, Jesus says, He only does and says what He's been told to do. Mm. Um, so even when you do notice Him, really it's Him in obedience to the Father and the Son. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think uh, I was just thinking as we were touching on earlier about one of the ways we can quench the spirit is to divorce him from from the word. And I think um, you know for lots of people, guidance is is a big thing, isn't it? Where the spirit comes in that that we want sort of 
impressions or, or feelings of that, that we ought to take that job or marry that person. And that's attributed to the spirit, isn't it? We want the spirit to guide us by giving us some extra biblical um, uh, sort of confirmation or, or of something. And um, and yet actually, the, the and this is why it's so good going through Proverbs, is that the way that the spirit guides us through his words um, is not by just providing you know, snap answers for every decision we might face, but by transforming our minds through the wisdom of God's word that we're able to weigh things uh, and, and to give us godly biblical principles with which to navigate life, um, which, is, which is a harder and more costly and more time-consuming work because mm. God is about forming a sort of person who can live uh, rather than just dropping sort of answers out of the sky. Um, and that's not to say he doesn't. He might not give us that through the counsel of a brother or sister, or you know, there's all that to, to, to play with it. But that's that's often where people go wrong. They look to the spirit for a sort of guidance that is quite hard to quantify or mm. understand. But it will it will resolve in some sort of feeling or decision. Whereas actually, he guides us through the through the word, doesn't he? Um, yeah, he's not anti mind. No, and I think that's really important. What you've just said there, um, it's the transforming of the mind. Mm. So. So the, so the Holy Spirit is not anti-mind. I, 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 it, you know, this is what mindless guidance is, isn't it? You toss a coin. Yeah. You uh, hold a crystal. You, you know, feel drawn towards. Mm. Uh, we've got to be really careful of that. The world does all of that sort mm. of stuff. Um, but but um, he, he uses the mind. Mm. That's not to, not to say that we, we don't have experiences, and it's not to say that we don't feel things. And uh, sometimes we ought to feel more. Mm. Um, so we're not against feelings. Anti-emotional. We're not. Or, no, or not at all. Then. You know, and we're all different beings, and we have we have emotions, and we we sh- there's nothing wrong with emotions, but there's everything wrong in listening to the emotions to guide you. Mm. Um, but no, the spirit works through his word mm. through our minds. Mm. Yeah, mm. yeah, yeah. Brilliant. Well, I mean, I think. Yeah, perhaps. He's and, and, just, and sorry, yeah. I, don't, I want to say on that because that doesn't mean to say that you have to be a great intellect. No, and it doesn't mean to say that God can't speak. So you know, when people talk about words of knowledge and stuff like that, um, the Spirit does use that. So you know, a very simple um, child can come up to you after the service and tug your shirt and say, um, uh, "Ben, you shouldn't talk about people like that." Whack! Mm. That's a word from the spirit. Mm. You know, if you were dissing someone or something, oh, okay. do, do yeah. see what I mean? <laughs> um, you know, and, and yeah, a, a simple, yeah. simple child. I mean, I yeah. had a card from a six-year-old yeah. in the church. Just had a cross on it. Front, yeah. and he said, "He is risen." On the yeah, cross. that's it's just powerful word. Absolutely of God. amazing, yeah. isn't yeah. it? Yeah. yeah. So, and, uh, so when when you go to Acts, where it says, uh, you know, the children and the the old, and they're all mm. uh, speak the word of God, or, or however it quite says it. Um, that's true of church. Mm. The little, the little Caleb mm. can can speak a word of the Lord to you, even though he can't read, mm. because he can say, "Daddy, I don't think you were nice to Mummy," or something, mm. and wham, mm. yeah, <laughs> yeah, and he's locked in his room. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> too young to have those opinions. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, look, let's. I mean, it, it's perhaps we finish with this. It, it is just an amazing thing, isn't it? Just to say that. That God, the Holy Spirit, has taken up residence in our in our lives, and and He actually lives within us as believers and as a church. And I mean, Jesus actually says, doesn't He? Um, it is better for you that I go. Mm, yes. And you think, what would be better than actually being with Jesus in the mm, flesh? Yeah. Like, wouldn't that really help me? Yeah. And He says, it's better yeah. that I go yeah. so that He can come. So we live in a more privileged position now than yeah. even those disciples did. Yeah. You can yes. put it like that because you, he, he is with us. You and just uh, have to look at the disciples pre and post Pentecost yeah. to, to, to understand that difference. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And he's our, he's our comforter. He's our guide. We walk with him, keep in step with him. And uh, it's just a great privilege, isn't and, it? And, and uh, sorry, just on that, mm. because, uh, yeah, when, when, when it's um, post Pentecost, when the Spirit comes upon that little fragile mm. church what do they do preach. their job is to preach the gospel mm. to the world isn't it that's their job mm. and to gather people uh, in 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 the body of christ that's mm. our job mm. so holy spirit work 
is taking that gospel yeah, out, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, and therefore yeah. to quench the spirit yeah. would be to put the light under a bowl, wouldn't it? Yeah. And not to. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. 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 All right, thanks, brothers. Hope that's been helpful for you. Um, we are um, on the letter R after next week. Um, so that's tune in for that. And uh, yeah, cornerstonechurchkingston.org. You can access that series uh, we mentioned. Um, listen up. Um, we we uh, how to, how to listen, how to hear. Uh, that's in our back catalogue on the website. You can you can find that if you want to uh, follow some of those trails a bit more. And uh, if not, do tune in next week. <laughs>